Leading up to the hunt, I had been preparing with working out and doing these things and trying to get in the best shape possible because I knew it was going to be a difficult hunt. We we're going to do a backpack hunt. We we're going to be hunting at elevations above 12,000 feet and it was going to be difficult. There was no doubt about that. When we were driving out there, I was, I was going through some bouts of some different sicknesses and I, I had a sinus infection. I, I felt like I thought I had COVID a few times and it wasn't that, I couldn't figure out what was going on, but I just went on the hunt anyways. And when we got there, we had planned to make sure that we were able to acclimate. Michael had dealt with altitude sickness in the past and had a scare with having high altitude pulmonary edema where his lungs had had filled up with fluid and was it was in the hospital for it. The first couple days we just stayed at elevation, didn't do much physical activity uh, and and really took two or three days before we even started hiking to go in there. Hey, I see one though. You do? Yeah. Let me see you. Straight up this avalanche shoot. Yeah, the second one's a doe, I think the first one was too. I see a doe, I don't see two. At that point, I felt like I should have been good to be able to do it, but I still wasn't feeling well. We started hiking in about three days before the opener to try to do some scouting and maybe glass up some bucks for that opening day. When we were hiking in, it did not take long for me to realize that I was having trouble breathing. I had a shortness of breath. I was dizzy, I had headaches. And after a couple miles into the hike, which we were, we were going um, quite a ways back into the backcountry, And when I did that, I, I realized that I couldn't keep up. I'll check it here again, because it says I've pulled GPS string. Okay, that's fine. But once we get to the camp, I'll message you and let you know. Okay. And then if you change plans, just let me know. Cool. Cool. Right. See you guys in a couple hours. Yep, see ya. Well, I only made it another mile and a half to two miles before I just, I couldn't go any further. So myself and Justin, we set up camp and just, we're gonna plan on staying there for the day. And at that point we were somewhere around 11,500 feet. So we were, we were high altitude, but we were still planning on going. Uh, at least another five to 700 feet in elevation and another four or five miles before we got into where Michael and Mason were at. I had my first experience on a two week backpacking trip at elevations in the 11 to 13,000 feet. Started noticing some symptoms of altitude sickness that I didn't play, paid too much attention to. Uh, kind of struggled through it more than I probably should have. Uh, we camped out. Then we immediately started hiking. Uh, Mason and I woke up early and hiked in. I started feeling pretty sick about halfway on the hike. As far as my, what I was feeling was uh, headaches. Uh, getting kind of bad stomach aches, but uh, the headaches and the pressure of a headache was pretty noticeable and extremely short of breath. Um, didn't have a whole lot of food. My appetite was very minimal. I did not feel like I needed to eat. And when I did want to eat, I didn't like what I was eating, even though I generally typically would. When I would breathe, I was gurgling and spitting up fluids and some blood um, and then ended up spending, I think it was a day and a half or two days in the hospital for elevation sickness, uh, high altitude pulmonary edema. You might get yourself in a position that you think you can do something regardless of knowing you can't hike, but you think you'll be fine just because typically you would be. When you feel sick, you've got to make the decision to head down, regardless of what you have weighing in on the hunt. I was struggling to make dinner. I was just having some issues. So decided it wasn't worth risking it. Let's go back down and sleep at a lower elevation. I, uh, I started feeling a little bit better, but I, I still wasn't at a point where, where I felt great. But uh, after a couple days down there, I was like, you know, on the opener, I was gonna hike back in. So we just got up to the trailhead and we're back here again after the first time. Slept in the hotel the last couple nights. Starting to feel um, a little better here. Um, I think that uh, 
we're just gonna take it slow and try to make a push to the first campsite which is where all of our stuff is and then we're gonna stay there for the night glass um, see what we can do and then hopefully push our way in the next day to meet up with Mason and Michael to our deeper spot where those guys have been hanging out the last few days scouting so take it easy hydrate a lot and just hope to, to keep on pushing when we were hiking in I was struggling worse than I was the first time I had half the weight on my back because my camp and a lot of my food and everything was already in there but I was still struggling I just couldn't catch my breath I felt like I was in a fog it just it, it was terrible and my, my heart rate was just through the roof I felt like that someone just had my lungs and they were just had them in a clamp I just wasn't able to breathe correctly definitely struggling quite a bit really contemplated going back to the truck but I don't know if there's any benefit to that right now I'm basically at the elevation my camp's at so just gonna try to get in rest up do some class and make dinner go to bed and reassess in the morning well we ended up making it all the way to camp we made it and while I was cooking dinner that night I couldn't figure out how to work my stove and I finally got some food but I, I didn't have an appetite which is a, a symptom of having altitude sickness along with the shortness of breath the headaches, the fatigue, all of those things were adding up. And I knew I had a mild form of altitude sickness, but I, I wear a, a Garmin Tactics Delta solar watch. And what that watch does, it's able to tell you one, your heart rate, and it's also able to tell you your blood oxygen level. So as I was checking that on the way up, I was flirting around 90 or a little bit below 88 to 90, which your normal levels are 95 and above. So I knew it wasn't great, but I, I didn't feel like I was in any critical condition at that point. I went to lay down in my tent and it was still daylight. And I went to try to get my bow and go outside. And I just, I couldn't even get up. And I got outside and I just, I felt like everything was spinning around me. I was having difficulty moving at all. And so I went back in the tent and laid down. And at that point, I, I, I fell asleep and I woke up just choking, coughing, choking. And I checked my blood oxygen level and it was 72. If you're at that level for long periods of time, you can cause permanent lung and brain damage. So without a doubt at that point, it was time to go back down. So I just finally got some good news. I'm trying to pack down the lower elevation and head into the hospital. I got a text message, or in reach message from Michael saying that Mason shot a big four by four and it's down, he watched it fall and they're gonna be packing meat. So oh, I'm, I really wish I could be there with him, but super, super pumped. He deserves it. So excited for that. I'd say my obsession with high country mule deer started quite a few years ago. Yeah, right up the gut to the right, he's on the knob now. Moving forward, I went on my first high country mule deer hunt in 2018 with my friend Michael, and that hunt was cut short pretty quickly by his deal with altitude sickness. Finally, years later, this is the first time I got to go on that high country Colorado hunt where you're looking at elevations 12 and 13,000 feet. So going into opening day, we glassed up some bucks right away. There's hunters all over the place, which didn't expect at all. Michael's going after a couple bucks up in some really high nasty stuff. I'll see if I can show them to you. It kind of reminded me of my Utah hunt where there's hunters running all over the place. Uh, I tried to stalk a nice 4x4 four four right off the bat in the morning and another hunter blew it out before I got to it. But uh, on my way over there, the bucks climbed, climbed up on a knoll where they would be able to see my approach. I then uh, dropped a bunch of elevation and made a, a long loop up through some cliff bands, which covered my approach perfectly, but it was a long, grueling stalk to get up there. When I popped up on the cliff band right above where I last knew the bucks were, Michael, I glassed up at Michael and he signaled to me with his bow and arrow 
to the left saying that the bucks moved further up the, the gulch. So Mason went down, all the way down through. I'm gonna zoom you in here. Beside that pond, up. Sorry, it's getting getting blurry here. Up that side. Up across. Up across there, all the way up. And we were using that snow patch as reference. Kept going out, and he was standing right there, and those deer were standing there, and that deer is right there. I poked over and saw a bedded two by two. And I knew he was with the four by four I was after. I, I took one more step, and I could see the tips of his antlers looking right at me. Bed facing the way the four by four is. Mason will kill these deer, for sure. At this point, the wind hit the back of my neck the antlers started spinning side to side, so I knew that they got my wind. I already had an arrow knocked, but I got my release hooked up, and I just waited for my opportunity. And the, the buck started standing up, and I already pre-ranged the, the bedded buck at 62 yards. And when the other bucks were, stand, were standing up, I just, as slow as I could, I knelt up where I could see them, drew back as slow as I could. I settled my pin on him, and, and I crushed him. He went, went down through the the gulch below, and that was the end of the story, then the work started. Yeah, I had to have hit it. What's this thing doing? Oh, come on, go down right there. Go down right there. There's his reaction, look at him. He cannot believe what he just did. He cannot believe what he just did. That is a done deer. Yes. Mason did it again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, that says it all. I was extremely excited for Mason like he deserved that more than anybody but I was also really disappointed that I couldn't be there to help out with the pack out and as he was for me with my elk and it was just a it was difficult uh, situation but I knew that I wasn't going to be any help I was going to be more of a liability than I was uh, anything else so went down got in my truck and drove to the nearest hospital which was well over an hour away to be able to get there. So, you know, through research and talking to the doctor, there's three types of altitude sickness. You have acute mountain sickness, which is just your form of, you know, having a little bit of dizziness, loss of appetite, fatigue, uh, headaches, those types of things. But then there's also the more serious type, which is high altitude pulmonary edema, which is filling up your lungs with fluid and then high altitude cerebral edema which is where you have fluid in your brain and luckily I didn't get to either of those points uh, if I would have stayed at that elevation any longer you know there was a potential that I wouldn't have woke up if I went to sleep and and stayed there for a while so it was a good decision to be able to to move down one of the things they said to me was that I wasn't able to I wasn't able to hunt or go above 8,000 feet elevation for the rest of the trip, which when you're hunting high country mule deer, there's nothing that's below 8,000 feet elevation. Well, we got our camp set up and just below is this nice little rock ledge that we can glass out in this bottom, hoping to maybe see some deer come out here. Just got set up here and instead of trying to rush somewhere with the last hour or so of daylight we got, Figured sit here, cook dinner, and just glass this bottom and see if anything comes out. There's a fresh one up over there on the hill. Starting to get into some sign. This 14 day hunt was something I've looked forward to for so long. 
We put so much effort and work into it. It was easy to get really down on yourself and feel sorry about yourself, but I just kept telling myself, I'm in one of the most beautiful places in the country. So even when I couldn't really do anything, I just tried to keep that positive attitude and just adapted and I pivoted and went to hunting elk at lower elevations, which was a blast. We worked our way around and covered some miles in that morning and found a lot of elk sign, found a lot of deer sign. And with Mason being able to kill an awesome four by four on the opening day, Michael ended up not having any luck. He, he put on a, a number of stocks after that, it just nothing panned out. So overall, it was a successful trip with Mason being able to come home with that deer and meet in the cooler. And it was also kind of a little bit reassuring to myself that once I got back home and realized that I had some underlying conditions that caused it and it wasn't that I couldn't go back to elevation ever again, I can promise you that I will be back in the high country chasing mule deer again.